In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray on thy heart and print your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life, my hopes, foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. We recite the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, in light of you as it is. Sanctify the death of the truth In the same way he calls gathers and lights and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. It's always fun when you have a different cadence than everybody I'm sorry, I, I'm too. <laughs> <laughs> the third article of the Apostles' Creed is probably one of my favorite articles. It's sort of the redheaded stepchild of the Articles of the Creed. The second gets all the attention. You know, Pastor Hall preaches the big sermon like he did last week, and everything's always about Jesus, and of course, it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the third article of the Creed is, is much like my favorite article of the Oxford Confession. If you don't have favorite articles, as a Lutheran, you should have favorite articles. My favorite article of the Oxford Confession is Article 5. Certainly, just as Article 2 uh, of the Creed is important, and certainly Article 4 of the Augsburg Confession is certainly the article upon which the Church stands or falls. It's all about justification and what Christ has done for us. But, without Article 5 of the Augsburg Confession, we would still be lost. In the same way, without Article 3, of the Creed, sorry, it's all these different articles and it kind of gets confusing. Without Article 3 of the Creed, Article 2 would be of no use to us. Article 5 of the Augsburg Confession states, in order that we may obtain this faith, the faith that is uh, expressed in Article 4, in order that we may obtain this faith, God instituted the office of the ministry that is provided the gospel and the sacraments. Through these and his means, he gives the Holy Spirit who works faith when and where he pleases in those who hear the gospel. And the gospel teaches that we have a gracious God, not by our own merits, but by the merits of Christ when we believe this. You can't have one without the other. You can't have Article 2 of the Creed without Article 3. You can't have Article 4 of the Augustana without Article 5. The two go hand in hand because God works through means. It reminds me of a joke that illustrates this nicely that hopefully you guys don't get offended because it talks about flooding. I know it's still kind of a touchy subject here in Houston, but there was a guy who lived on the side of a river, and he heard on the radio, warning, there's going to be a flash flood, get out. And he says to himself, no, God will protect me, I'm a good Christian, I will be safe staying right here. And sure enough, as, as the radio predicted, the flash flood came, and the guy gets up on top of his house, as the waters come up, and a boat comes by and says, get in. I'll take you to safety. 
And the guy says, no, God will protect me. I will stay right here. And the waters get higher and higher, and they're almost to him. And then a helicopter comes, and the helicopter over the loudspeaker says, come up. They send down a rope, get in. He says, no, I'm a faithful Christian. God will protect me. I'm going to stay right here. And sure enough, the floodwaters came up enough that the man drowned and died. And he gets to the, to the gates of heaven, and he sees God there, and he says, what happened? I trusted in you. I had faith that you would protect me. And God says, I warned you with the radio. I sent a boat and a helicopter, and you still wouldn't listen. <laughs> I think it's funny. You think it's funny. <laughs> right? I guess with the mask, it's harder to laugh. Right? And it's a funny joke, but it shows and illustrates how God works through me. Right? This is how forgiveness of sins is won for us by Christ on the cross and then is delivered. Not in some mystical way where you have to make a decision for yourself, or in some experience that moves you, or some magic revelation where the Spirit comes and talks to you. The Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit works through means. The Holy Spirit works through the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins. Without the Holy Spirit creating and sustaining faith, we would be dead just as we confess, I cannot by my own reason or strength. The beauty of the third article of the Creed is that it takes a historical event such as the death and resurrection of Christ and it makes it applicable to us here in the present. An inmate in prison may be pardoned when the president or governor signs a piece of paper, but ultimately it doesn't mean anything until the pardon is enacted and the inmate is released. If the paper is signed and then never delivered and no one tells the warden, then the inmate is never released and the pardon doesn't matter. In the same way, if Christ died for all our sins and it was never declared to us or written down as recorded as it is in Holy Scripture, then we would still be dead in our sins. Christ's death and resurrection wouldn't have any value to us because we would never have heard about it. Yet thanks be to God that the Holy Spirit moved the prophets, apostles, and evangelists to write the Holy Scriptures and that we still have those sacred words today that declare the good news to us. Thanks be to God that we are not left alone to die in our sins, but rather that we are brought to life by the Holy Spirit who creates and sustains faith in our hearts. We certainly can take no credit in any of this for ourselves, but it is completely the work of the Holy Spirit through the means of grace. Through the preached word and the sacraments administered, faith is created and nourished that the death and resurrection of Christ is our death and resurrection as well. In our baptism, we are made a part of the Holy Christian Church that we confess in the third article. Through simple water and word, we are joined with Christ in His death and resurrection. Here we are given the comfort and assurance that we are joined with Christ, and though we or our loved ones may die, because we are joined with Christ, we will also be resurrected like Christ on the last day. Though we may be constantly struggling with the trials, temptations, and struggles of life and our sinful nature, we are able to take comfort that the Holy Spirit continues to comfort us with the Gospel, just as He always has and always will. He continues to point us to Christ and His salvific work accomplished for us on the cross. He continues to point us to the means of grace where forgiveness, life, and salvation are constantly handed over to us. He continues to point us to the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and life everlasting. And that's as good as it gets. Amen. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.